In my humble opinion, Custom Robo is a true hidden gem for the GameCube. You're likely aware if you're watching this, but seeing as it's an older game now and Europe never got it, I'll give a quick rundown just in case. In Custom Robo, the main gameplay premise is that you can pick from a variety of robot archetypes with various weights, speeds, jumps, and gliding capabilities. These archetypes can be further customized with various weapons and then used to fight up to three opponents who also boast a mishmash of weapons. If you've heard about Metabots, it's sort of similar. It's a pretty cool game, bolstered with a pretty decent amount of replayability and a borderline tongue-in-cheek story mode that's still charming and funny to this day. I couldn't tell you how many times I replayed this game growing up, and I do truly love it still to this day. Even just capturing this footage from the beginning of the game slapped a big dumb grin on my face. I really need to talk about this game in a video someday. But for now, we segue to Synaptic Drive a spiritual successor that aims to capture the same gameplay style since the Custom Robo series seems to be effectively on ice. Giving the game some credibility is the fact that Custom Robo's creator is directly helming the game. Of course, this last decade has brought us many spiritual successors to old games with the original creators involved to... uh... varying results. Games like Mighty No. 9 wound up notorious, games like the Bloodstained duology turned out wonderfully, and games like Shenmue 3 turned out... well... Shenmue 3 is okay. Synaptic Drive lands a little closer to the Shenmue 3 end of the scale, unfortunately. In fact, despite enjoying it, I'm finding it hard to want to recommend. Let's go over why. At first blush, Synaptic Drive does an admirable job of playing how you want it to. You pick from a few different characters that have those varying weights, running speeds, jumps, and gliding capabilities, then outfit them with various weapons, some of which are lifted straight out of Custom Robo. They aren't trying to hide anything here, and the experience is all the better for it. Hell, my fellow Custom Robo diehards will absolutely recognize this dragon weapon. It doesn't hit as hard here as it did back then, but it speaks to the strength of Custom Robo that I was overjoyed to see this weapon make a return. And just like that game, you'll use the assortment of weapons you unlock as you decide how you'll take down your opponent. Perhaps you'll build your character out to keep the pressure on your enemy and always be chasing after them with homing missiles and carefully aiming traps. Or maybe you'll build a quirky character whose primary gun shoots in 90 degree right angles to catch opponents off guard from around a wall. They basically just copied everything right on over with a new addition, the wire weapon. The wire is deployed with the right stick and you can choose to either just let it run autonomously or continue to maneuver the right stick to aim it toward your opponent or set it up as another trap. This combined with the game's much higher gameplay speed makes most matches of Synaptic Drive incredibly frenetic and this is the best quality of the game. Custom Robo was by no means a slow game, it was quite deliberate, but the proceedings feel much more arcadey here, which is much more in line with my personal preferences. Loud, high octane, and with a lot of inputs and situations to adjust to on the fly. When a match in this game is firing on all cylinders, it achieves its goal and gave me the specific adrenaline rush I'd been chasing after ever since I gave up hope on seeing the Custom Robo franchise return. It feels awesome. But then those feelings sober up a bit and some of the shortfallings come into focus. I found the enemy AI to mostly be competent, but there have been a couple times I've been able to win by putting in the bare minimum effort. Sure, I could force myself to mix it up more, but when something is working so effectively, why change it up? Standing still like this is also a great change of pace. The camera work here prefers to be constantly moving, and if you're facing a fast opponent, it can get slightly disorienting. It actually made me quite appreciative of how static the camera was in this game's predecessor. It was certainly less flashy, but it helped keep the action and strategy in clear view rather nicely. You've also probably noticed that, stylistically, the game is quite dull. While I won't say the robots in Custom Robo were iconic, there is a certain style to them. Synaptic Drive's characters mostly reek of being generic, particularly highlighted by the game's stock-feeling menus. There's no campaign mode to be found here either, as any sense of lore and character work is hidden away as text in a menu. Characters are silent during fights also, so they're just kind of surface level at best. I don't say that in hopes that characters would interact during gameplay, I just say that to compound the point that compared to the game this title is inviting comparisons to, there's no charm to be found here. 
So with no story mode, let's touch on the single player content that is here. There is a training mode, a versus mode pitting you against an AI or a buddy if you have someone around locally to play with, and an arcade mode that offers up 100 fights with different criteria and stipulations. One row of fights forces you to use different equipment in each round, another implements a tag team style where you and your opponent can tag in and tag out characters, etc. These introduce interesting enough gameplay scenarios and are certainly welcome, but it all just rings a bit hollow. You need to really enjoy the gameplay to want to play these fights well enough to earn gold medals. As you complete each node, you'll gain experience and level up, which is how you unlock new characters and weapons. But the game doesn't show you what you're unlocking with a visual representation like Custom Robo did, so you're stuck trawling through these basic interfaces trying to remember what you just unlocked. The order of these items is all over the place too. The game starts you off with unlocked characters that are farther down on the menu than things you need to unlock late into the game, so it's not like you can just look at the bottom of the list to see what's new. The lack of any flair is evident as well. Custom Robo moved the character model to really let you see what you were selecting. Here the character just stands still. Worst of all, when preparing for these tag team matches, you can't even see what you're selecting, period. You just have to either set selections you want to load out beforehand, or memorize the weapons and characters you want by name. It's rough, and I have no idea why it's this way. There's also an online mode, and it's, uh, it's also rough. You can select battle buddies, which I assume are preferred players after fighting them once, and do either 1v1 or the tag team styled battles. But good luck finding a match. I tried a few different times over the past week and change and only found one match. And once it started, the game said my network was unstable and I got absolutely clobbered. Don't get me wrong, I have no doubt that the other player was better at the game than me, but the lag I was experiencing definitely wasn't helping my case. Seems it's not just me either. I'm playing on Switch, but over on Steam there's a lot of complaints of similar network issues, some calling the game outright unplayable online. So if you were hoping to hop in here and have a smooth online experience to help make up for the bog standard single player offerings, yeah, no. You're going to have a bad time. Synaptic Drive leaves me really conflicted. From playing it and experiencing its highs, it's clear to me that the team absolutely understood the main draw of Custom Robo's gameplay and in some ways even improved upon it. I do like the faster pace and the wire mechanic is a great addition. But the game's numerous downsides, like its outright bad networking capabilities and being devoid of charm hurts it. It's also a simple looking game, though I imagine that was the trade-off to help keep the game running smoothly. There were a few times while playing Synaptic Drive that I was head over heels feeling like a kid discovering Custom Robo all over again, and I truly do value those moments. But for the most part, I was playing this game thinking about that other one. Its single player offerings gave me a few serviceable evenings of enjoyment, but overall I just had that increasing urge to drop Synaptic Drive and fire up Custom Robo again. I rarely bring up price in my videos as financials are a very personal subject for most and I don't tend to presume what's an affordable price for a stranger watching. But I'm going to break that protocol here and say you should wait for a sale on Synaptic Drive unless you absolutely believe in this style of game and want to show it the support it's going to need. With the online functioning like it is, or perhaps I should say how it isn't, and with the game offering so little to keep you engaged over time, it's hard to recommend for full price. Maybe try it out on Steam where you can refund it if you aren't immediately taken with it. The most frustrating thing about this game is that at its best, it comes so close to being exactly what I hoped it would be, but far more often than not, the game's budget and limitations shine through and disrupt what would otherwise be smooth sailing. Synaptic Drive shows that this team has the potential to recapture the gory days, but fails to capitalize on it more often than not. Go play Custom Robo again for your fix, and grab this game when it's at a price you feel comfortable taking a gamble on. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear me talk about another Nintendo game, scroll down to the comments and find a link on my video to the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games that never officially left Japan. And until next time, do take care. This video was made possible in part thanks to patrons like Potato Jello, Goldstorm07, Buckles Chucklow, Jeet, Galico Plus, The Crazy Even, The Legend of Groose, Patrick Thompson, Svandelica, and Wolf Chaoson.